going. All right. Well, hello and good morning, everyone. Welcome to our first Fridays with Fiscal for 2021. Um, it seems like it's been a while, but I guess it kind of has with uh, the end of the calendar year and everything. So I hope that that went well um, for all of you. And um, the first thing that I wanted to look out real quick before we jump into the budgeting stuff is our training page. I'm sure that you guys have been out here um, if you're in this session, because you probably signed up for it here. Um, but just a quick overview is, you know, here's um, all of our trainings. We're getting them out here for um, the year in advance. So I know Michelle mentioned this yesterday on the touch base. Um, so I just wanted to kind of come out here and show you that uh, we have all of our basics trainings out here and the registration is available. Um, and then we have um, some intermediate sessions later in the year. There's a couple that we're still figuring out here. So we hope to have those out there soon, um, but we're working on getting uh, most of this out here in advance. Okay, perfect. So Michelle can let people in too. So we should be good there. Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> all right. So um, I am recording today. Once we get the recording all set, then um, the recording links will be out here. Some of the registrations didn't send an email. Is that normal? Um, no, we do usually set them up to send you a confirmation email. There is a step that we do when they set when we set them up. So we can double check and make sure that those are good to go for the future ones. Um, but yes, normally you will be getting a confirmation email with the Zoom link in there. And let's go back to our main page here. Um, so today's topic is budgeting. Um, I know it's February, uh, kind of earlier than we've done in years past, but we did have some feedback from you all that you know it's helpful to have this earlier rather than later so that when your districts um, are ready to start budgeting, you have this information in advance um, and we figured might as well do it now because again, there'll be a recording, you can always go back. Um, I'm going to go to the USSR documentation and just ha have this open before we jump into the software. There are some documentation pages for the budgeting pages that you can find um, right in this main menu. But what we're going to have open today, if I go to the appendix and the useful procedures, these first two options here give you budgeting scenario steps um, for different situations. So the first one is for um, creating proposed amounts for the next fiscal year, for the future year. Um, and then the second one is making adjustments in the current year. And the current year is what we're gonna talk about first. So let me open this one up. And basically what this does is it's gonna walk through the entire process using both of those different budgeting pages and kind of give a step-by-step -step of what you would do in each of these situations. So this makes it really easy um, to follow along through as like you're doing the process or you're helping your districts through the process. Um, let's see, so I'm already logged into my software here. And let's look at these pages and then we'll go through a couple of these different situations. Um, all right, so we'll go to budgeting and we're gonna start in the scenarios page. What this scenarios page is, so this is kind of like, I think of it like a holding page. Um, it's like a preliminary step. Um, when you first uh, migrate your districts over, this will be empty. There isn't anything that comes over in this page um, because it's kind of just like a working area. And what we can do here is we can create um, different sets of budgeting sheets. And um, basically this would allow us to um, have a compilation of different um, spreadsheets with the figures that we could potentially push over um, to then apply for either our budgets or our adjustments. Um, let's see, and you know what, we are going to create one for the adjustments. 
Um, you can see that I have the ones in the background here and um, basically, you know, I mean, it's kind of coming out here earlier um, to repair, but I wanted to just leave some of these out here because um, as your district works in this page, you know, they may accumulate uh, different scenarios in their grid. Um, it'll be blank when it first comes in, um, but they can have several versions out there um, and they can leave them out there so that um, in the future, there is an option to clone previous scenarios that they've used. And um, we'll look at that option once we actually get to the budgets. Uh, so for now, so we're creating this new scenario. So I just give it a name. I could give it a description if I want. Um, and then the fiscal year is basically used for um, sorting on the grid. So this fiscal year is kind of just informational, but we're doing adjustments for now for 2021. So I'm going to enter that. Now to actually get information in here, we have a couple different options at the bottom. The first thing we can do is this create option and we'll look at this. Uh, this is basically going to pull in the accounts we want to use from the software. If they already have a spreadsheet that's from that they have like outside the system, they have it in Excel and they have all of their account codes and figures on that, they can upload uh, directly to this without having to create first. Um, and of course, we'll look at that too in a minute here. Um, but let's create. Uh, so when we create, this gives me a pop-up that looks very similar to um, what we see when we are like creating a report. This looks a lot like our report creator. Um, up at the top here, I have a select type. So this is going to dictate whether I'm pulling expenditure accounts, budget accounts, or revenue. So whether I'm, yeah, if I'm budgeting or if I'm doing anticipated revenue, I could switch between those. So I'd have to have a different budgeting sheet for each type of account, um, but I can have multiple budget sheets, multiple revenue sheets if I wanted to, you know, break them down. Um, so let's do, we're doing budget adjustments. And um, this first uh, page here, so this is going to be like what information that I'm going to see on my sheet. I do want to have, you know, I'm seeing all of my different account code pieces. Can I make my screen bigger? Yeah, sorry. Let's see, hopefully that works. Um, okay, so um, this is, you're going to see the account code. And then if you have um, any totals that you want to see, so the prior year expendable amount, um, your, you know, fiscal year to date expended, you might want that, especially for adjustments. Um, so any um, other totals that you might want to show um, in order to help with, you know, what budgets or what adjustments that you're going to create, they could add it here. And then this second tab comes into play with filtering down what specifically I want to see on this sheet. Um, so again, this works much like creating a report. And what I'm going to do, so let's filter this down by account code. And let's say we want to do adjustments just on like our grant funds. So I can use, you know, the operations, they work the same as they would in the report writer. Um, with the like operation, I know I can use a wild card. So um, this will just pull all of my uh, 500 funds into my sheet. And let me save this so we can create it and we'll take a look at what that looks like. Um, this does take a minute. It depends on, you know, how um, many accounts you're pulling at one time. So uh, there is, you know, there may be benefit depending on how they organize if, um, they want to pull, you know, just one fund or one fund special cost center at a time. They can stack multiple budgeting sheets up in this grid, um, you know, but then each of those would be like a different spreadsheet. So it kind of just depends on how they want to organize it. 
now that it's finished, we can see um, that we have, okay, here's the name that we gave it. Um, here's our file name. Um, and then we have these different options. So the first one that we have here is to edit. Um, if we open this up in edit mode, this is all of the information from that first tab that we said we wanted to see. So here's the account code, the description. We have um, each of our different totals here. And then the very last column is this PA 2022. So PA is proposed amount. And um, this header is very, very important. It says 2022 because we're currently in 2021. But if we're doing adjustments for this year, we do need to change this. So we need to make sure that that says 2021 in order for these to apply for this current year. So they're doing adjustments, they do need to um, remember that step. And I'm gonna accept, so that saves it up. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this one to Excel. So that's why I'm not modifying anything else in there just yet. The second one is to regenerate the sheet. If I wanted to do this, it would basically take me back to this report writer. I could um, re-pull the information fresh. Um, if I've made changes though, it won't save those. So um, that's kind of like, you know, just fresh start um, on what I have, you know, in that sheet. And then I have, you know, an option to um, download this basically, and then I could upload back and replace what's in here. So if I download it, make changes, and then I want to upload it back to this sheet, I could. Um, so let's download this. And we'll open it in Excel. So what it's going to do, it's going to um, just open it up. We can see these are all the same columns that we were looking at um, when we had that pop up, if we were to edit it within the software. Uh, but this might make it a little bit easier for them, you know, if they like spreadsheets, if they're used to Excel, so to take a look at it this way. And what I'm gonna do here, so let's see. So we're doing adjustments um, at this point in the year. So for an example, and I wanna do like a little bit smaller set than all of this. So for an example, what I'm gonna do is take these accounts and filter out any that have an expended amount of zero. So I haven't spent anything um, for these accounts. So I have this um, group of accounts that has an expended amount, but it didn't have, um, you know, it didn't have any um, allocated amount there. So let's do an adjustment so that we can account for this expended amount um, to bring our balance to zero. And what we wanna do when we're doing adjustments, um, I believe there is a note, uh, I think it's probably yellow in that walkthrough, um, but this is a bit different than the way that you might think about doing adjustments if they are uh, manually entering them through like each account or like in classic if you are mass loading adjustments. Um, what we wanna do with this is we're filling out a proposed amount field. So even though I'm doing adjustments, I'm gonna put what I want the expendable amount, like what that should end up, um, the expendable amount should end up being. So if I want the expendable amount and then what's expended to equal zero, like I have to put the full amount in there. And actually, you know what? I want to load just these back in. So I just don't want those other ones hanging in the background. So I'm just going to make a new sheet to make this a little bit easier for us. They could load that in, you know, they could load the entire sheet back in in reality. Um, but just for the purpose of our testing, let me make sure I cut this down a little bit. So what I'm doing by this is like, 
Um, and I, well, I know that this can be confusing, so I want to make sure I'm trying to make sure I'm explaining it appropriately. Um, but basically, like if they had a starting amount of a thousand and they wanted to add 500, um, they wouldn't put the 500 in this column, they'd put the total, they'd put, um, they'd put 1,500. So it's whatever they want the total to end up being is what they're actually going to be putting in this column, not just the adjusted amount. Um, but again, it does say that on the walkthrough. So um, check out that note there as a reminder. Um, but I just kind of wanted to make sure to note that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And then for the sake of looking at everything here, what we're going to do. So, you know, if I didn't change it and I had just made changes to this exact sheet, um, I could use this button to upload and replace it back in there. Um, but I kind of saved it as a new sheet and I want to show this upload option. So I'm just going to add it back as a different sheet instead. So I clicked this upload button, I give it a sheet name, and then I'm going to go ahead, choose a file. And start the upload. Once it's in here, um, then I'd be go ahead, I'd be able to go ahead and save. Um, I also can delete sheets out of here. So this is going to allow me to show you how easy it is to delete something. Let's go ahead and do a delete there. All right, so now we have our adjustments in. This looks good. Make sure you remember to save because you can get all of your sheets in there. And if you just X out, that will not be good. Um, so remember to save it up and then now we have our um, adjustments in there and it's this one with the capital A um, there. Let me hop over here, make sure that we looked at everything we wanted to look at. Here is our note um, that kind of explains more um, with what I was talking about with the amounts. And then um, talks about uploading. So there is, uh, there are a couple different um, spreadsheets. And I think that was part of the request for the training today to talk about these spreadsheets. Um, I'm not going to talk about them in the context of adjustments, but I will talk about those once we get to actually creating next year's budgets. Um, we will look at those. So now that we have our scenario out here, um, what I want to do is go ahead and promote this. And when I promote it, it's going to send it to my proposed amounts page. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, when I do this promote step, and I kind of went ahead and just uh, hopped in there and clicked OK. But when I do this step, um, you do want to be careful if you've already um, had things in the proposed amounts grid for this year, for the fiscal year that you're um, doing this for, because promoting a scenario will replace anything else out there for that fiscal year that's in the proposed amounts grid. Um, so mostly you want your scenarios to contain everything together. Like you can have different sheets within the scenario but each, each scenario, um, if you're going to promote a scenario, you want um, to make sure that whatever's in there um, is going to contain the full scope of what you're looking to apply. Um, and once when we kind of look at this, uh, once you get more comfortable with it, I'm sure there are different methods where like they could, you know, promote some budgets, then like apply them. Um, kind of do it in waves like that certainly is possible but I would definitely say at first especially when you have districts just starting out the easiest thing is to have them keep everything that they want for that certain year within the same scenario um, now obviously we're doing adjustments at this point so the assumption would be that anything they had out there for 2021 is long done and applied um, 
so it would be okay to overwrite that if it's out there. Um, okay, but now we've promoted it. So let's go over to our proposed amounts. And once we get to this grid, so it's going to show us everything out here. If we had things for multiple years, we might want to use this little drop down to make sure that we're just seeing the relevant year, especially when we're doing adjustments and might have multiple years out there. Um, so here are all of the adjustments that we've um, sent over from scenarios and um, it does have the amounts. Now, again, this is sort of like a holding area. Um, still, they're not fully applied to our accounts. So if there is something that changed between the scenario step and this step, you do have the ability to open up these adjustments um, and then modify them and save before the adjustments are actually applied to the accounts. Once you're ready to apply, so um, you have to have the fiscal year selected for this step. Um, and we do have to apply everything in the grid for this year at one time. So I can't just like select certain ones. Um, I would go ahead and click apply. And then I get this little pop-up that's gonna ask me um, a couple of questions. And um, when I look at this dropdown, I can see that I have, um, you know, temporary, permanent, those are both to like uh, the original budgets, um, which we'll talk about when we get there. Um, but for this example, we're talking about the adjustments. So we'll pick that. And then um, we have, uh, if we want it to update the um, gap original amount, so if you do want it to do a gap adjustment as well, um, you could check that. And then the effective date. So this is when the adjustment is going to, like what date the adjustment is going to have. Uh, let's just go ahead and pick a current date. And then we can go ahead and apply these. Um, so this will take a minute because it's going out there and it's going to uh, figure the adjustments for each of these accounts. Got to write down my account number ahead of time. So let me just grab that before we switch pages here. Okay. So if we go to our core accounts, let's go look at one of these. And when we open this up, so I can see here, you know, my expendable amount was there already, but now I can see this adjustment. It did happen within this month. Um, and then that's going to give me this remaining balance of zero. If I open up my budget adjustments at the top here, um, now I can see February 1st adjustment um, for that amount and that was created from my proposed budget. So that's how I know that it came from the proposed amounts grid. And each one of those other accounts that you know we had on um, our grid as well will also show an adjustment just like this. So that's the adjustment portion, um, you know, pretty simple. Um, I guess I should mention that, um, you know, this is a way to do the adjustments. It may be very helpful to do it this way, especially if they are, um, you know, making standard adjustments to a lot of accounts. Um, but certainly that page we were just on with the, the actual account, you know, entering adjustments, like they could enter them manually too. So they don't have to, use this method, um, but this is just a way to like basically mass update. It would save them some time if they have a lot of them. All right, 
so let's see. So let's go back to um, our appendix. So again, this is the appendix and then I'm under the useful procedures. And this first one is steps for creating proposed amounts for the next fiscal, fiscal year. So this is where we're starting to look at, okay, we're getting everything together for 2022. Um, so we wanna start uh, putting those out there or at least creating our scenarios for them. Um, so then they can be applied for the future year. Now, um, again, when they migrate, this grid will be blank. So uh, if this is their first year in redesign, they will start from scratch. Um, they would, you know, come in here, create similar to what we just looked at for the adjustments. You know, they can create budgets, 2022, enter a description, um, et cetera, and then go through and use like either a create or an upload option to add their budget sheets. If they were in redesign last year and like going forward, there is an option to clone these budget sheets out here. So if I have my budgets from 2021 that I can see here, let me go ahead and view this. And I would be able to use this clone option. And this is gonna go through and create a new um, scenario with all of the included budget sheets that I can then go update. Um, I just went ahead and clicked clone because this is going to take a couple minutes. Um, you know, probably could have cut it down to maybe just one of these sheets, but I wanted it to be a little bit more realistic. Um, we talked about, you know, these scenarios, they may want, they, you know, want to have everything that they're going to apply at once. So it probably is going to have, um, quite, you know, a couple sheets in there or a lot of accounts. So when they do this clone option, it this is normal. What is happening right now, what we're seeing is what your district should expect um, because it's doing a lot of work. So, um, you know, be prepared to, you know, have it take a minute. I mean, obviously they can do this and then still open another window and, and continue working, um, you know, while it's creating that cloned sheet. So once it pops up, then we can go ahead and let's do new budgets 2022, give it the fiscal year. And then, you know what, I'm just gonna go ahead and save this off the bat just to, just so I don't forget. Um, and then I can always come in here and edit it to, um, excuse me, to actually update my different sheets. So let's see. So I could, you know, I could go ahead and add on another sheet if I wanted to upload. Um, I could do that. And let's see. Let me go ahead and let's talk about this edit option a little bit more. So we were in here. So if we open this up, um, this one is all of our cafeteria accounts. And I see my last column is my PA 2022, uh, which is good. Now, now I do want it to be 2022, so I can leave that there. Um, last time we looked at you know pulling those out to Excel and updating those there. Um, and that certainly, you know, if that's something that your districts are comfortable with, absolutely an option you know, that they can stick with. But what this does is give them an option to have, you know, a lot of those same um, functions, but just within the software. So it kind of saves a step um, if they want to give this a try. And what we can do in here is this can um, use formulas. So uh, let's see if I want to, I'm just going to pick this one because it has figures in it. Um, so if I wanted to take like one of the totals from um, like the fiscal today or like the prior year figures, uh, what I can do is come in here. I can select a cell when I'm doing a formula and then maybe do a little math equation there. And then I can carry this down. 
um, carry it down to all the columns. And then you can see, you know, it's calculating based on this formula that I entered in. So if they want to, you know, if they're going to base their future year budgets as a percentage of a prior year figure, um, they could still do that right within here, um, right within this spreadsheet and still have um, that full function. Uh, any changes that they make, then they just go ahead, click accept, and now those are included um, in this spreadsheet. Um, and then we talked about, you know, we did, we looked the last time at just like straight up downloading from here. Um, and then again, if I downloaded, entered the figures, I could upload right back. Um, but let's hop over to, um, here is our um, scenario walkthrough or a budgeting, you know, walkthrough. And let's look at these spreadsheets. So if they are going to use outside spreadsheets, um, and it does say here, it must contain account code dimensions in separate columns with the proper headers. So these different sheets um, do have that built in um, and these are report definitions. So if they click on this, they can download it and then bring it into their software. Um, and then it also has to have a column that has the PA and the year in it. So we included these in the documentation to make it a bit easier. Um, I mean, they can get they can get the spreadsheet like from the scenarios, but sometimes, like especially when the district is um, getting used to this, you know, maybe they want to report and say, I mean, there there could be um, other reasons that you know they don't want to actually start the scenario yet, but they're just wanting to pull the report. So this is why we have this um, out here as an option. Oops, and see, that's exactly why I'm glad I clicked OK first so after cloning because sometimes you come back and you just click out. And if I hadn't saved that, <laughs> I would have been in trouble. Um, OK, so let's go over to the report manager. <laughs> we'll come back. Um, all right, so I have these loaded in here. And I'm going to go ahead and just generate this. It generates to Excel data. Um, I just did it for our cafeteria fund so that it doesn't take too long. And I just want to show you what this looks like. So this is looking pretty similar. Um, you know, we have um, our different uh, columns with our totals in here. And then it does have a column for this proposed amounts where you can, you know, go in and put in the date. Um, and then as long as you keep the headers uh, the same here with um, your account code and with the total, then they could use this spreadsheet, um, enter their figures here, and then um, load this in as like the, just the upload option instead of creating a sheet within the scenario. There is another worksheet report um, in the software, but that one, the first column in there has like the full account code all together with the dashes. So um, this one is sort of an alternative that makes sure that has it in the separate columns um, for each piece of the account code. The other thing to know with this is you might recognize that this looks pretty similar to a classic bud work. Um, so if you do have districts that started their budgeting process, maybe they pulled their bud work so maybe they pulled their bud work from a uh, classic and started entering figures there. Um, if, if you come across that situation, what you'll wanna focus on is um, making sure that the headers, if you match the headers to these, um, to what it would be in redesign, and then make sure you have this proposed amounts column, then they would be able to modify those spreadsheets to be able to bring them into redesign. So they don't have to like fully start fresh uh, with, you know, this report or with a sheet, they could, you know, modify their current spreadsheets to still be able to come to the scenarios and then um, upload those sheets into one of their scenarios. 
And let me go ahead, let's edit this. Throw this down here. I just want to put some numbers. There we go. Good enough. All right. Well, I didn't do a very good job of dragging, but we have some figures in there. So that's fine. I'm happy with that. Um, so let's go ahead and accept this. And uh, let me see. Okay, so um, once we have our scenario already, oh, the other thing. So um, let me save this up. So I know I've talked several times about how you can have, you know, a bunch of stuff in this grid um, eventually. But the other thing that's really nice with the scenarios is like, because this is your working area, this is like your preliminary area, you could also have multiple scenarios for the same year. So these are my new budgets for 2022, but you know maybe I'm not sure yet if I'm going to um, if negotiations are going to go this way or that way. Um, so maybe I have two different situations for what my budgets might be uh, based on that. So my salaries might you know end up being this amount or they might end up being a different amount. I could create one scenario for each of those two different situations or scenarios. Um, so I could have two different rows out here, two different budget scenarios for each one of those possibilities. Um, and then what happens, you know, once I figure out which one of those I'm actually going to go with, then I would just promote that one of the, you know, of the two, and it doesn't have to be two, it could be many. Um, so you see, so the budwork setup from Classic does not have an ID column like the scenarios in Redesign. Um, uploading the budwork spreadsheet used for budgeting will not need the ID. So yeah, when you download these sheets, like it does include the ID. That's kind of like a unique identifier to the account code. Um, so it's on these standard sheets, but um, you can still use a budwork even though it doesn't have that on there. And you'll notice like this is my report definition um, for that like working budget sheet that I could pull and this one doesn't have it on here either. So um, yeah, I know that that is different um, between that, but you definitely still can um, even without that. All right. So I think we'll go ahead and promote the 2022 budgets, but this kind of wraps it up for the scenarios portion of this. Does anybody have questions about creating those scenarios um, before we move on? Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and start promoting this because again, this one might take a minute as well. Okay. All right, so now that I've promoted it, I'm gonna to go to proposed amounts. And this is where, okay, so I had my adjustments from 2021 in there and then I just promoted 2022 amounts. So now I do have both in this grid by default, um, but let's just make sure that we're looking at the 2022. Um, let's see. So is there a way by looking at the proposed amounts to know if they've been applied or not? And do the old proposed amounts stay out there forever? So um, is there a way to know if they've been applied? Um, from this proposed amounts grid, I don't believe so. Um, we do have a report that we can look at. Um, it depends. We're going to talk about temporary and permanent. Um, budgets. So from looking at the account page um, or from a report, like we could, uh, there are different ways that we could tell. 
um, on this proposed monster grid, I'm going to say, no, I don't believe so. Um, and then the old proposed amounts, do they stay out there forever? That's a really good question. So um, if you don't do anything with them, like, yes, but we can't delete them. So now that these adjustments are done, um, and we'll just go ahead and show this, is I can select all of these and click delete and then get rid of them. So they don't have to stay out there forever. If you have a larger grid of them like this, uh, this grid, it, it is interesting how it works is it selects like what you can see. So you might have to select and delete a couple times um, to, to fully clear it out, but um, you can remove them. All right, so again, um, once I have these proposed amounts in the grid, I push these over from scenarios. If I have things that I know are gonna change, like, so maybe I put these out here. Um, oh yeah, also when I put them into this proposed amounts grid, this is when they would start showing as like the next year proposed amount. Like um, if they're in this grid and there's a figure in it, then if I went to the account, like I could see that um, NYP next year proposed uh, total um, sitting out there as something that's waiting. So that is a reason that you might not want to delete these from the proposed amounts grid, even if you have applied them, um, just so that you can still kind of refer to uh, those amounts there up until you get to the new year. Um, but I can come in and go ahead and edit this amount if I wanted to. So let's just do some fives in there and and um, sorry, I was writing down my account code again. Um, I'm going to just open a new tab this time instead of switching around too much on this one. Um, so let's just go to the accounts page. And let's just get our account ready so we can see how this, oops, and it's this first one here. Okay, so see, because we have that in the grid, this next year proposed, it's showing down here. Um, so that kind of gives a, an idea that that um, is sitting out here. Now, when they're ready, so we have our year selected, we can go ahead and click apply. The next thing to talk about is the difference between these temporary and permanent budgets. Um, now the temporary budget, so um, this, if they're, you know, at the start of their year, they might apply the budgets, but they're not fully sure if those are their permanent ones. So they might wanna mark them as temporary. Uh, this doesn't necessarily, um, it's not necessarily that big of a difference in the software between the two. It's mostly something for reporting. So if they apply them as temporary first, then um, there are reports that they can um, that they can run. Uh, there is one actually in the library, um, in the USAS reports library, uh, that I can show you what that one's called. Um, that would actually allow you to pull a report to see like you know, if it's temporary or permanent budgets um, were applied to the accounts um, with the temporary. So you can um, apply a temporary budget and then later in the year, you're gonna apply a permanent budget. The one thing that's important with this is after you apply a permanent budget, you can apply uh, again, like another round of permanent to replace that. But if you try to apply a temporary after you've already done the permanent, that that's not going to work. So um, mostly it's for reporting. And then that's the important part to remember is that the temporaries always, always have to be first. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, there we go. So Michelle posted a link. Um, posted a link to their reports library. And so that um, it's budget transactions, initial estimates. 
I'm um, in revenue transactions initial estimate. So check out the chat. That is the report that I'm referring to for this um, as well. So that one is, is very helpful. Um, let's see. Okay. Then I see Heidi's um, requesting as far as seeing that in the grid. So we know Michelle is on that and I'm sure we'll discuss. Um, okay, perfect. All right. Sorry, I'm getting distracted by this chat, but I know you all can see it too. <laughs> so I just want to make sure we talk about anything we need to. Um, okay, so so now we're at this point where we decide, you know, are we applying them as temporary? Are we applying them as permanent? Um, the other thing you'll see, so if we, you know, say we're just at the beginning of the year, we're going to do them as temporary for now, because that way when I, you know, if I run a report, I can see that they're um, temporary. And then you have, you know, do you want... So maybe when you're doing the temporary um, budget, you don't want that to actually be your gap original budget. So you would be able to um, apply the temporary budget and then not have that um, actually update the gap figures. So that's one main difference. Um, and then um, the full year as well. So this is an indicator if, um, if it's checked, you know, it indicates that um, these are intended to be for the full year or if it's not checked then it's more so that like you're expecting those to change um this one also is basically for informational purposes uh it's a field you know that can be used um for reporting and stuff but it doesn't necessarily like change um anything with how those are applied the effective date is still going to be seven one um and then those will still be the budgets until the district does something to change them. Uh, so let's go ahead. Oh, and you know what, while we're here, so permanent, um, just switching back to this again, is you can see that this is grayed out. So they don't have an option for those. Um, once you are doing a permanent, then it is going to update the gap amounts and it is going to um, show that it's expected to be a full year because that would be the nature of the permanent budgets. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and apply. Again, this is going to um, potentially take a minute. Um, you know, I, I did do like a larger data set um, than we sometimes do in the trainings, but um, especially with these steps when they are applying so much, uh, I figured I'd do a little bit, like I figured it was okay to do kind of a more realistic example because these steps, you know, they do take time. Um, but it it's going to each one of these account pages and actually, you know, updating these figures. It's adding these entries. Um, and once this um, goes through, you know, it's, it's actually going to show, well, we're, it's for the next year. So we have to go change our posting period to see it. Um, but it's adding entries out there for each one of these, you know, accounts um, that we have on our grid. Um, let me just, just check my notes, see what else we want to talk about. Um, I think I did say this, but just in case, so the, you can repost as permanent um, if you need to. So, um, you know, I know I said you can't post the temporary after the permanent, but you know, if they did need, if they posted as permanent and then like they, you know, needed to change something or whatnot, like, and they're not doing an adjustment, like they could repost a second round of permanent budgets to replace them. Um, the other thing is we looked at, um, you know, how this has the next year proposed out there. Um, so this shows, we talked about deleting things from these grids. But um, yeah, if I go remove this, like after applied it for the next year, um, then, you know, it's, it will show this if it's in the grid. So I may not want to like clear out this grid right away. Um, and I think that's about it that I have in my notes. Um, so we're getting towards the end here while these apply. Um, are there other questions that you guys have? Oh, 
oh, let's go look at let's go look at this library while we're waiting. So um, there's this section for budgeting reports and then budget transactions initial estimates and revenue transactions initial estimates. Um, so let's see, there is an example here. And what this is showing me, so I can see the account code, I can see the date, and then there's this type column. So temp initial, gap initial. Um, and so that'll basically show me this allows me to see like, oh, this was a temporary budget for this amount. Here's this full year checkbox. And then when um, the permanents um, are applied, so this example doesn't have the permanent on here, um, this replaced box will be checked. So once it's replaced, then like that no longer applies. It's not gonna add the temporary and the permanent, it's gonna replace it. Um, so that's what this one can be helpful for is if they're going to try and see a history of like what was applied. And that's still working. This is the one part I wasn't able to test exactly how long it took ahead of time. Um, but I'm not really sure that there's too much else we're going to look at with this um, because we'll have to go to like, so this is going to post it for, you know, 2022. So we'd have to go, you know, look at the future year. Um, so I'm not actually going to wait for this to fully finish. Um, I think we'll go ahead and wrap it up then. Um, will it still show as next year proposed? As long as you leave it in the proposed amount grid. So if you delete it out of the proposed amount grid, that's when you won't see it there anymore. But even if you've applied it, as long as you leave those in the proposed amounts grid, it will still show as next year proposed um, for this year after it's been applied. And I know I was kind of like here a couple times, um, but I saw we had some people that maybe like didn't join right at the start. So just, uh, just one more time for good measure. Uh, these walkthroughs are in the appendix of the UCS manual in the useful procedures and they're the top two. So I definitely recommend, um, you know, using those uh, for your trainings and um, let's see. Oh, oh, very good point, Michelle. If the district has their proposed amounts entered in classic and then they're migrating, um, the proposed amounts will be recognized. So it will bring them to that proposed amounts grid. Uh, so let's go to here. Um, so it's going to bring your classic figures into this grid and to propose. And then they have the ability to apply them um, when they're ready, but it will not have a scenario. So if they delete those or if they apply a different scenario over those, they could potentially lose them. So, but um, it will bring the figures in, but you just have to um, know that it'll bring it to the proposed, the proposed grid only, um, and then you can apply from there. Thank you, Michelle. And Michelle's got a description of that in the chat too. Yeah, so then the next year they'll, um, the next year they'll make, uh, make a scenario. And Heidi, yes, so, It'll come in from classic into this proposed grid. They won't have the scenario, but they will still have the ability to come in here. Um, they can filter it down, find any accounts if they need to make a change and then edit. So they absolutely can. Um, and then yeah, next year they'll have to make a scenario, but all the years after that, then they'll have the clone option. So, okay, um, so I'll go ahead and wrap it up here. Um, I mean, I'll stick around for another, um, you know, couple minutes if anybody has additional questions, but um, if you are all set, have a great day. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and we will see you on the next one. Thank you. Thank you.